Things are going great for Greg Schiano and Rutgers. Can this be a breakout year for them? Scarlet Knights looking good. Can they win nine or 10 games? Well, you may say no. The schedule says, yeah, maybe. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and a play-by-play announcer, I want to thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com and get started. This could be a breakout year for Rutgers. Plus, we'll go game by game on the schedule, and I'll make my point for you. Plus, we have our picks. We're going to look at the odds of the top 12 teams of making the college football playoffs. How many Big Ten teams are on that list? After 10 years in the Big Ten, will 2024 be the big year for Rutgers, their big breakout year? Um, we'll see in a moment when we look at the schedule game by game, but a big win total is very, very possible. Quick reminder, Rutgers finished the regular season at six and six last year, and then they beat Miami in the pinstripe bowl to end up seven and six. Now the downside to last year is they were only three and six in the big 10, but they were in the impossible East with Michigan and Ohio state and Penn state. None of them are on the schedule this year for Rutgers. So it got me to thinking just how many wins they could reach this year because they're a pretty solid, good football team last year. So before we take a look at the schedule in depth, let's take a look at the team that they will put on the field in 2024. Let's start a quarterback, Ethan Kaliak Manis. He transfers from Minnesota. We talked about him a lot last year with the Gophers and incumbent Gavin uh, Wimsett saw the writing on the wall and he transferred to Kentucky. Now, Wimsett was more of a power rushing quarterback while Kaliak Manis, who I honestly wasn't that impressed with at Minnesota comes to Piscataway as a much better passer than Wimsett. So we could say there's some improvement there. Now his transfer to Rutgers was a bit of a surprise. And despite being very mild mannered, he reportedly had a falling out with PJ Fleck after the Purdue game last season. And then he bolted and went east. And he's also familiar with Rutgers' offensive coordinator, who used to be at Minnesota. So there's how you connect the dots on that deal. And maybe this will be more comfortable for Cal Caliac Manis there at Rutgers under this system. Like um, whether he's a better passer or not, it may not matter. Greg Schiano and Rutgers, they're old school, right? They like a tough running game. And who better to hand the ball off to than the Big Ten's leading rusher from last year who is coming back, Kyle Manungai. Rushed for 1,262 yards last year and was the pinstripe bowl MVP. Good running back. He could have gone to the NFL, decided that he wanted to improve his future stock and play another year of college ball. Plus, I think it's kind of unwritten, untalked about, unspoken, if you will, a feeling that there's a bunch of guys here that make up this Rutgers football team. I think they think they're a special group and they want to have a big year together in 2024 and they want to help Greg Schiano build something and they don't want to be a Rutgers afterthought that joined the big 10, 10 years ago and still doesn't get proper attention. This team might get your attention. If this team doesn't want to throw the ball, um, you know, if, if, they got, uh, they've got a lot of options last year. Look, I want to talk about Nassim Brantley. Uh, he transferred in last year, um, but he was in his uh, second transfer, so he sat out last year. He couldn't play right away. He comes back. People kind of forgot about him, uh, so he missed 2023, and he comes from Western Illinois. We're in 900 yards and nine touchdowns. They picked up Monmouth wide receiver, uh, Demir Miller. All right, he led FCS football with 1,300 yards, but – We'll have to see how he does as a receiver against Big Ten defenses. So maybe some hit or miss weapons here on the outside. We'll see. Uh, the offensive line is led by left tackle Holland Pierce. He was unrated out of high school. Nobody really wanted him 
and yet he has started 37 games for a Big Ten school in Rutgers. Four other linemen have eight or more starts. They return in 2024 as well. So not a lot of superstars up front, but a gritty bunch that plays fairly well together. If there's a weakness, it may be up front on defense. Uh, Keontae Hamilton has 18 starts under his belt. Malcolm Ray comes in from Florida State as a defensive tackle to try and help things out a little bit. You got edge rusher Aaron Lewis, who uh, transferred years ago, signed up, went to Mich said he was going to Michigan first. I actually enrolled for a semester and said, no, nah, then transferred to Rutgers a couple of years ago. And he's he's good for about 40 quarterback pressures a season. All right. So you've got that. And then there's Wes Bailey, an edge rusher who had four sacks last year. So there's something, a lot of experience, a lot of upperclassmen on this Rutgers football team. And Rutgers win or lose last year, they came to play. Every single game, they were gonna they were gonna hit you in the mouth. Now, sometimes they weren't as talented as the other guys, um, and sometimes they just fought you and they got the dub. That's the kind of team they are. That's what Greg Schiano likes. They also have senior linebacker Muhammad Torrey. He's back. He was second team, uh, second in the team in uh, in tackles last year. Led the team in sacks. He's preseason All Big Ten. So there is some talent here. Make no mistake about it. Tyreen Powell has 22 starts under his belt, and he lends more experience to the stingy defense. And he was on the Buckus watch list last year, so he's got a lot of talent too. Their secondary lost Max Melton to the NFL. He was a corner. Eric Rogers played plenty last year, and he'll take his place. Um, now, their secondary depth is a little thin, so they're going to have to stay healthy back there this year. Look, Rutgers' future beyond 2024, I mean, we're talking about 2024, but we could take a moment to look at beyond because, um, man, their future is bright. The They've been killing it with recruiting this year. Every time I turn around, Rutgers is signing a four-star or keeping a four-star in the state of New Jersey, going to Rutgers. Very impressive. Keeping the kid, Jersey kids at home is a big deal. And I've seen the 2025 class ranked as high as fifth and as low as like top 15. They're good, no matter how you slice it. Just a couple of examples, uh, four-star wide receiver, Michael Thomas from New Jersey, four-star uh, Taliba Kaba from New Jersey, four-star DJ McClary, Larry's from uh, New Jersey, just to name a few that are staying and they're, they're coming to Rutgers in 2025. So shiano uh, has got it rolling a little bit, just like he did the first time. Let me say a word about Greg Schiano for a moment, because as you, as you know, if you're a Rutgers fan or alum, you know this is his second stint there as head coach. And his first run was from 2001 to 2011, and this is pre-Big Ten. And in 2006, they finished 11 and two, greatest year, right? And it started out nine and zero. Oh, they beat number three Louisville. Everybody was talking about Rutgers that year. They finished the country uh, ranked twelfth. I finished the season ranked 12th in the country, I should say. And four of the next five years, Shiano and Rutgers won no less than eight and nine games. That was, it was, it was great. It was a great solid run. And then he moved on. But he came back in 2020 and he's trending upward again. And again, with a big year in 2024, he'll reinforce what I think. And that is that Greg Shiano is the best man in the entire country and maybe the only man or coach that can lead this Rutgers football program now and into the future. So uh, Rutgers fans, very lucky to have a guy like this. And I think uh, things are going in the right direction. And we're going to take a look at the Rutgers schedule coming up. Again, there's some, some big names not on it. Not saying it's a cupcake schedule. I'm not saying that. But I think we could start tallying up some wins. There's some 50-50 games in there that go their way. Could be a big number. We're going to talk about that. But first, if you like what you see here, if you're a Rutgers fan, spread the word that we're here. Subscribe and follow Locked On Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And don't forget to pick up uh, your Scarlet Knights team shirts, hats, get everything you want, pennants for the 2024 season right at our website where all of our podcasts go. It's TalkBig10Number10.com. You see the scroll on the bottom if you're watching on YouTube. Again, TalkBig10Number10.com. We put all of our podcasts there in order and group them by team. You got to see some that we focus on, some Rutgers stories in the past. They'll be under Rutgers. And then you get your merchandise there and uh, ticket information. It's all right there 
Again, TalkBig10.com. So FanDuel and a lot of other odds makers have Rutgers win total at six and a half. All right, they won six games last year and then won the bowl game for seven wins. Got them kind of at the same place at six and a half. But again, no Michigan, no Penn State, no Ohio State on the schedule. Like last year, there's three games that could go another way. Now we're talking about a higher win total. Take the over. We're going to go through it right here and go game by game and check this out. See what you think as well. I think you think we're crazy saying eight, nine, ten wins. We'll see all that coming up in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. Passion, drive, and patience. That's the formula for winning championships. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day, especially you everydayers out there. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe and tell your friends about us. Subscribe on YouTube or share and follow and like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day, wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget our website, talkbig10number10.com. All right, let's do this. Let's look at the Scarlet Night schedule for 2024. Let's see how many wins we can rack up here. Vegas, FanDuel. Six and a half is the number. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, take the over. Take the over because they're going to get past the over. Now, how much over? Let's figure that out right now. All right. They open it up on Thursday, August 29th. Kind of ahead of everybody else. Got a date against Howard. That's a win. Next week, September 7th, Saturday, they take on Akron. That's a win. Then uh, they're at Virginia Tech which uh, that's in two weeks. That's coming off a buy. Virginia Tech is not what it used to be back in the day. I like the Inter Sandman, how they started off. The fans are all excited. Love the atmosphere. But I think Rutgers goes in there and gets the dub. 3-0. and All right? Next game is at home against Washington. Big 10 matchup. Washington versus Rutgers, right? Still sounds a little weird. I don't know what Washington is going to be. We haven't done our season preview on them yet. They got a whole new team, and now they're traveling 3,000 miles to this game. By the way, it's an 8 o'clock game on Fox. I'm going to take Rutgers on this. The, the crowd is – Piscataway is going to be fired up for this. Home game, under the lights, Washington coming across the country, 4-0. 4-0. Now, they hit the road in October. At Nebraska, let's be real. I'm not saying they're going to go 12 and 0 or anything. I think this could be a hiccup game. Um, in addition to Rutgers being my kind of surprise pick this year in the Big Ten to really do something, Nebraska's the other one. I, I think Nebraska's poised for big season as well. They're going on the road. All right, I think maybe they take the loss there. So we're sitting at four and one. All right, and then then one of those 50 50 games on October 12th, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Now, we previewed Wisconsin earlier in this week. If you want to go back and check it out on our podcast, go ahead on Lockdown Big Ten. I think this is a winnable game. I think it's one of those 50-50 games. I think Wisconsin's going to come in, and I think I think it's going to be one of those grinder games. I think, I think points are going to be at a premium. I think Rutgers can win the game. I said this when I did the Wisconsin preview the other day and went through their schedule. So I don't feel good about that game at Rutgers. Sit at 5-1 and one now. 5-1. and one. Next, home date against UCLA. Again, UCLA flying all the way across the country. UCLA is not going to be that good this year. They're going to struggle. Six and one. See where I'm going with this? All right, now, 
while UCLA comes here the next week, October 25th, Rutgers has to go across the country and take on Southern Cal at Southern Cal. Let's be honest, it's probably going to be a loss. All right. We're at six and two. Then they come back home, taking on a Minnesota team, which I don't know what their quarterback situation is. They got some nice running backs, but that's it. So I think they win that game. We're at seven and two, right? Is my math adding up? At Maryland. Who's playing quarterback for Maryland this year? Kalea Tonga Voilo is gone. Feels like a little bit of a reset for Maryland. This is a win. It's a short road trip. It's not going to be tiring. It's a possible. That's a win. That's a, that's a 50 50 winnable game. All right. They can get that. What are we at to? I'm losing track. I'm counting so many W's. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven. Maryland would be eight. Eight and two. You got to take on an Illinois team. That's at home. I like Luke Altmaier, their quarterback, by the way. Uh, that, that could be a game go down the wire. Illinois plays close games. If Rutgers wins that game, that's nine wins. If they don't, all right, eight, fine. And then at Michigan State to close it out. Now, I think Michigan State will be uh, improved. They got, they're going in the right direction with Jonathan Smith. But, I mean, I, I feel like this is a transition year for them. This is a winnable game for Rutgers. These last two games – Against Illinois and Michigan State, you go into the Illinois and Michigan State game with eight wins already, according to us. You win Illinois and Michigan State to close out the season. That's a 10-win season. You split them, you got nine. Even if you lose them, it's eight. You're still over the six and a half and more than the six wins you got last year in the regular season. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this schedule. Rutgers has some wins here. Now, they got to win these 50-50 ball games. They can have a big season. What do you think? Hit me up. Twitter, Talk Big 10, number 10, or YouTube. Love to hear from you, Rutgers fans. Me, some of you probably say I'm crazy. Let's do it. Let's get after it. Um, meanwhile, uh, some other Big Ten news I want to throw in here as well. If you are, again, we talked about Wisconsin earlier this week. If you are trying to go to that Alabama-Wisconsin game in September, I don't know where you're going to stay. <laughs> Apparently, there's not a lot of hotels in Madison. Most people that go to games in Wisconsin live in Wisconsin. So there aren't a lot of hotels. I hear it's impossible to get a hotel for the Wisconsin-Alabama game. That's September 14th. And I'm talking within an hour walking distance of the stadium. You can't find a hotel. Last winter, hotels were going 550 bucks a night. And, of course, that's usually with a two-night minimum, right? That's how they get you. So... It's a tough deal if you want it better. I hope you have planned. If you if you're gonna go to that game, I hope you made plans already. Also, that didn't even include tickets to the game. Secondary market, just to get in the door, 600 bucks goes up from there. Well, so that's a tough ticket. That's a tough hotel. Also, we got a little update on Kyle McCord, real quick. Former Buckeyes quarterback, now at Syracuse. That's where he landed after getting jettisoned from Columbus. Remember, he was in talks with Nebraska for a minute. Going to go there. This is, you know, this is, uh, it was decision making time. This is before the Huskers were able to flip freshman Dylan Rayola. And Syracuse's athletic director, uh, John Wildhack, said McCord turned down double the nil money at Nebraska to come to Syracuse. I don't know if he should be talking about another man's business like that, but he did. And I'll believe it when I hear it from McCord himself. But that was at the time, again, uh, Matt Rule had just suggested to fans, almost kind of frustrated in a press conference, hey, you want us to go out and get a transfer quarterback? It's going to cost you between a million and a million and a half bucks. And then all of a sudden, they were in talks with Kyle McCord. And that was also a weird time because it was the time that McCord said publicly that he didn't want to go to another Big Ten team when he left Ohio State. And he certainly didn't want to play a team that would potentially play Ohio State someday. And he didn't. He ended up going to Syracuse. So anyway, that's the kind of money that was floating around there. Hey, are you watching Fox Sports and ESPN all day? Forget about it. I got something better for you. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. Program for you every day to bring you the latest, uh, biggest stories without all the screaming and talking heads. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube and for free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right. Uh, you know, on Fridays, we like to do picks. And since there aren't any games going on, we're looking at odds and futures. We're going to take a look at the top 12 best odds, according to Vegas and our friends at FanDuel, for um, making the 12-team the college football playoff. And how many of them are Big Ten teams? And then we'll look at the rest of the Big Ten teams just for fun as well. All that is coming up in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. Speaking of FanDuel, let me tell you about FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com. You know, sports are kind of in transition right now. We finished the NBA playoffs and the Stanley Cup. We're just basically baseball. Maybe you like soccer, all that stuff is going on right now. But there are fewer games except for baseball. A lot of baseball going on. FanDuel helps you keep the sports going here in the summertime. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a bonus or a boost daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer because FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Got some picks for you here on Friday night. All right, I'm going to give you a bunch. Consider parlaying a couple of them or two or three of them. Then you're a bigger winner. Dodgers over the Tigers. I like the Phillies over the A's. The Guardians over the Rays on the money line. Also the Reds over the Marlins and take the Mariners over the Angels. You want to put all, all of them together for a five-team parlay? Go ahead. Want to pick three of them, make a three-game parlay? Go ahead. You can do anything you want like that. It's all on FanDuel. So start making the most out of your summer. Again, FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, we're going to take a look at some picks. Going into the weekend here, what we're going to do, we've uh, looked at the FanDuel odds to make the 12-team college football playoffs. So we'll have the top 12 odds. We'll point out which teams are Big Ten teams, how many of them. And we'll look at the rest of the Big Ten as well, among some other borderline schools. So we're going to put it on screen, describe it as best we can here for you. If you're on audio only, wherever you get your podcast, that's cool. We'll do our best to uh, describe everything here. And um, we're going to start it off. Ohio State is at uh, plus 650 and Georgia at plus 600. I'm sorry, minus 650. Georgia, minus 600. Oregon is minus 290. Texas, minus 230. Notre Dame, minus 170. And there's Penn State at minus 145. That's pretty good. Ole Miss, I... um. I like Ole Miss's chances this year, minus 125. Now we're getting into plus money. Alabama plus 100. Michigan at plus 115. LSU plus 125. And Florida State. You, nobody is more happy to have a 12-team playoff than Florida State. They really felt like they got left out last year and should have been in. Well, if uh, 2024 rules were in effect, they would have got in last year. Plus 160 and Tennessee at plus 170. Those are the 12 best odds of getting into the college football playoffs. Okay. Now I have some more for you here. We're going to look further at the list and let me get rid of that. Okay. So uh, some bubble teams, Missouri uh, would be the 13th team best odds at plus 180, Clemson plus 200 and Miami. They're thinking they're going to have a big year this year. They're at plus 200. So we had what we had four, Big 10 teams on the list I just gave you of the 12. Let me go back there for just a second. All right. So there, there we have got Ohio State, Oregon, Penn State, and Michigan. So four of the 12 best odds of making the playoffs are Big 10 teams. Let's look at everybody else here. USC is at plus 410, Iowa plus 650, Nebraska plus 850, and Wisconsin is plus 950, and Washington at plus 1,000. Their chances of getting into the 12 team playoff. Got Maryland coming in at plus 1,500, UCLA at plus 2,200, Illinois at plus 2,800. I would think Illinois would have a better chance at UCLA. Uh, Illinois plus 2,800. Now we get into some big, long odds here. Minnesota at plus 7,000, Michigan State plus 8,000, Indiana plus 9,500, and Purdue plus 13,000, as is Northwestern. That's just to crack the 12, the 12-team 12 playoffs. And then, can you believe it? This is what I was talking about earlier. Rutgers needed to get more attention. Rutgers, not even on the board, we're making the 12-team playoff. 
And believe me, they're not going to come in last place in the Big Ten. So I, I think this is, um, I think this is a fixable situation with all the odds makers. I would put them at the very least. I put them in that Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin range plus six fifty, eight fifty, nine fifty. I put, I bunch them in there at the at the least. Heck, I just told you they could win ten games this year. So, um, anyway. Those are the odds as of right now here in early July of making the 12-team playoff. What do you think about that? Let me know. Love to hear from you on all of that. So um, we always end the week with some sort of pick em situation. So next week, we're going to continue with our previews of all the Big Ten teams. We did five this week. Means we have 13 more to go over the next couple of weeks. We still have Big Ten Media Days going on. We still have... Florida State, Clemson, and ACC schools rumbling about where they may go. We might do that next week as well with Big Ten uh, alignment, expansion, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we'll get to all of it right here. Tell your friends about us. We're here each and every day. In the meantime, there's many ways for you to interact with me here at Twitter, at X, at Talk Big Ten number 10. Comments on YouTube are always welcome. And don't forget on our website. Some of you are starting to email me on the website now, which is great. Um, of course, uh, right there at talkbig10number10.com. You see it on the scroll on the bottom if you're watching on video. I'll get back to you on that. Always answer those. Meanwhile, uh, be sure to subscribe real quick. It's free. Click the button. You can follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And don't forget our friends from Lockdown, Lockdown Sports Today, here for you 24-7 on YouTube. Feel free over the weekend to peruse a few more Locked On Big Ten podcasts at your leisure. They're on our website, talkbig10number10.com, in order, chronological order. Most recent are the ones up top. And then we also group them by schools. So this one, we focus on Rutgers today. It's going to go in the Rutgers file. While you're there, get yourself some merchandise, too. Get ready for the 2024 football season right there, talkbig10number10.com. That'll do it. Have a wonderful weekend. Can't wait till we talk again on Monday. Tell your friends about us to join us. I'm Craig Scheman for Lockdown Big Ten. We'll see you next time.